So, you know, that's my principle here, I guess. Whatever. I'm just doing it. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, cause yeah, I have some. I'm having some real issues with that small area up there, uh, which I'm not telling, trying to fix too much. As you can see, see there, the silhouette basically is flat. I mean, I wish I could. I'm really happy with the frontal part because that really changes uh, silhouette a lot. But I mean, the good thing about that though, uh, because it doesn't change the silhouette too much, uh, I could actually save a lot of polygons when I did that. Uh, when I retopologized it, which you will see later. Here I'm actually learning from my mistakes. Wow, yeah, for once I'm learning. And uh, drawing out the uh, knife uh, sort of guidelines on another layer, uh, well, on the uh, lower subdivision, so that it will come out a bit smoother when you uh, look at it. This part, however, did have some more uh, silhouette differences, seeing as I have these sort of ridges here. Um, I didn't want as much small details as on the outside. Also, remember with rocks and rock walls and similar things, uh, never ever ever make your um, your rocks symmetrical. That just looks horrible. Uh, trust me, don't do it. Always make them so that they look different from every every view. However, from this this rock from the back, you may notice is actually. Um, quite uh, non-detailed, I'm not going to add that much detail, that's because I sort of figured it to be grass there or something like that, that would be the part where the rock is sort of uh, connects to the terrain, uh, if it was somewhere along maybe uh, the ridges on a uh, river or something similar to that, um, uh, that's sort of what I figured, so I didn't do too much there because grass generally, uh, the, the uh, surface detail of grass generally are the alpha map planes so that you don't really need that much detail in no map here I'm just um, scraping off, you'll see what I'm doing here, I'm scraping off some of the corners and just making it so I'm trying right now to make it so that the rocks actually look like they, they stand out from the surface and not sort of just lie on top of there and this I'm doing with a large knife stamp uh, Thing. And now, I'm, now you can see I'm refining some of the edges here, which I probably should have done some more, but I didn't feel like I should need them. Now I'm again refining. Um, we're actually getting halfway here. Wow. Yeah. So you can see it doesn't look too bad. Too bad right now. Uh, refining some of the edges uh, with the large uh, brush. You can see that the um, abnormalities of the weird brush actually don't show too much. I mean, they're still there. If you can see the uh, stamp, which is on your right side. Uh, it has those weird uh, things on the side, those weird white dots, which sort of mess things up sometimes, but not too much. So, um, yeah, you can see that when I refine, because of the fall off, uh, some of the things look like they're really soft. Uh, that'll be fixed later on. Uh, well, right now, actually. Uh, so, uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, refining, refining, as usual. Uh, you can see it still looks very, very soft from from the uh, knife stamp. And again, that li that was losing some uh, outline, so I just have to it refill with the uh, standard sculpt tool, but without the alpha and with the large uh, size. So here I'm again uh, cutting into the. Uh, grassy part if you, if that was what we would use it for to make it look like the um, rocks actually stood out uh, which uh, this uh, with the scrape tool this isn't the best way to do it uh, but you know whatever I'm just giving some roundness to the back there uh, basically not that much to learn in this video really it's just uh, I could just put music of this but yeah, I'm pretty lazy, so that's not going to happen. Nope. Uh, again, doing, uh, trying with the script tool now. I realize that's not going to work too well, so I'm going with the standard scalp, uh, standard scalp rush, and just cutting in. And I realize this looks really weird uh, because you know the script tool doesn't like uh, rounded surfaces too much. Well, at least not that kind of round. Uh, so, <laughs> I I promise this that will be smoothed out later on. I'm just cutting in between the rocks to look like they're actually separated. Uh, this will all be done with the knife tool later on, so uh, don't worry, I'm actually going to do it properly. <laughs> there we are, I think I'm doing it now. What do you know? 
so you can pretty deep because I want the rocks to look like they actually are rocks duh again this is very quickly done I realize it doesn't it, it isn't perfect but I mean yeah yeah uh, oh, yeah, when I used the uh, knife tool there, it sort of rounded out some of the uh, edges, so I have to go in and redefine them. Really, I mean, this is a pretty decently long process. This took about two hours or something simple to that. I think one hour and fifty minutes, so it, it's not that long, but, you know, and it's, not, it, it's certainly not boring. I mean, it's, it's fun to do. It's, sculpting is always fun. Uh, so, again, cutting in between the rocks to make it look like they actually are different to rocks and not all attached. Uh, you see it really does add quite a bit when you do that and now I'm going in and sort of fixing that sort of plastic they look on the um, both the rocks and the weird part behind the rocks tweaking tweaking refining refining um, yeah you may also see that I have no idea what I did there but you may notice that I'm not too fluent with the uh, mud box that because I'm generally a zbrush kind of guy um, sure I sort of uh, I played with mud box for a while but yeah the zbrush fits better for me so yes I usually do organic things and I like zbrush for that uh, mud box too but I prefer zbrush also even though people keep complaining about its in face I I think it's genius, honestly, but you know, people don't like different things, so yeah. Uh, let's see, I, thought, I think I added a uh, subdivision here, so now we're on level 8, I think. Yeah, level 8. And we're also at <laughs> 2 million polygons, which is, I mean, it's be seen as quite a bit for just a stone wall, rock wall, but eh, whatever. If uh, I can handle it, I will use it. I'm actually going to go higher later on, but actually pretty soon I think. Uh, why I'm talking about random things is just because I really don't have anything to say here. It's really all the same that we've seen before. If anything new comes up, I'll be sure to let you know. Uh, let's see here. Scrape brush again. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it's just when you, I think this was after I had had a break or something and just came back and looked at it, uh, I sort of saw all the issues. Now I'm going with the grab brush with a hard fall off uh, and just tweaking this sort of, um, uh, the uh, indented areas so that they're closer to each other. It's sort of like the pinch brush in ZBrush, which I still have, haven't found an equivalent of in Mudbox, uh, which is sort of a shame. I really like the pinch brush, but... You know, I'll leave without it. Um, again, smoothing the edge up there, and now finally taking off that weird uh, scrape look, or well, the plastic look, I think it was. Uh, so uh, we're almost done here. We only have a few minutes left. Now I'm going in with the high details. We're actually on level nine or something. I don't even know. Actually, nine comes later on, uh, which is pretty soon. Actually, uh, let's see here. Now I'm actually, I think I'm dividing it to level 9 now, uh, I think, no, that was me saving, or something. I, yeah, now I'm dividing it to level 9, uh, 8 million polygons, whatever. My computer, I'm running this laptop with only something like, you know, 3 gigs of RAM, so really I can't handle too much, too many polygons, but, you know, 8 million, that's fine uh, for me, that's not detail. I'm just tweaking some things, making it hard. Now I'm going in with a standard brush and a stamp, which is default in one box. And this will add a nice sort of, uh, sort of stone-like look to this. Ironically, or maybe not ironically, but I spent some time getting the, form of the sort of stone look on them. Um, I will actually remove it later on. It won't be on camera. I did it sort of afterwards, but uh, because I saw that, that this, considering it, it is very smooth, it sort of rounded out a lot of the rocks. So I went in afterwards uh, with the standard, uh, you know, uh, scrape brush and refined it, which removed a lot of the high details. Some were still left, but removed a lot. Uh, but here yeah, again, here I'm using that stamp you saw before. Uh, this is actually from a guy who made some great rocks. Uh, I'm just using it because it's very useful. Yeah, and most of this, these sort of uh, scratches, well, the uh, 
things are really um, temporary in this case because I'm probably going to be removing most of them. And now we're pretty much done with the model. I'm just going through the subdivisions, checking which one I like most, so that which one is lowest uh, and can still keep the silhouette, so that I can send it to Maya. And now this is the one uh, level something with around hundred thousand polygons. Now I'm going up to the highest uh, subdivision level and exporting that, so that I have something to bake off of. And uh, let's see here. Saving it out. Oh, I mean, it's 8 million polygons, people. It, it will take some time. Um, yeah, well, it gives you a nice chance to look at the mesh, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, so this is the end of the first part. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me talk about the same things over and over again. And uh, whatever, it got a pretty nice end result from it. So, let's just end this.